Now look at what it did to the spring box here. Zoom right in here. Move right in. Look what it did to the spring box. Just totally busted it up into pieces. But the rubber bladder is okay. Appears to be. And the benefit of it all is you get to see how this thing's all put together when I put it back together. Cool, huh? Okay. So this is a 28 inch bar and it's got, zoom in for a close up of these. Just move right in there. It's got half as many teeth on it and they call it a full skip bar or full skip chain. And it cuts a lot faster than a regular one, supposedly. And it's working pretty good for me so far. If I had a hamster, he'd be a happy hamster. Now that we've cleared all the tree away from there, this big chainsaw, we can look inside here. And we got lucky because all that really happened was it, it broke the door up pretty bad. It goes over the top of the spring box. And the spring spring box frame is still pretty good. I'll have to replace some parts on it, but that's not big of a deal. But the box itself is in good shape. And you can see inside here the construction and how it's done. Basically you got, let me see if I can get a brighter exposure there. You got a rubber, a rubber uh, layer of thick rubber that sort of creates a pool. We stuck it up under the where the spring where the water comes out and put rocks on top of it and then built a wall in front of it here with a couple of posts that got put in the ground with concrete and some uh, I guess those are six by twelves mass I guess they're four by four by sixes that create the dam. And the rubber gets attached to that. There's a little bit of a, a uh, spillway built here. And then we've got a pipe in there in case it ever gets clogged up and still has to drain. And uh, then the top's just put over the top of it. We put a cattle gate around, which got destroyed, of course. And uh, with all this wood here, I don't think the cattle are going to want to get in there anyway. So. What we got to do now is clean all of this sawdust out here, get it cleaned up, get the parts back together, and then tomorrow I'll build a new, new uh, cover for it, and it'll be good to go. Okay, so we've completed the process of uh, putting this new drain in there. It's up to climb down in here, and you can see that it's just. The rubber is held on by a clamp, stainless steel, and I've got it closed right now to make sure that it's a good seal. You can see it's not actually leaking at all. And as the water builds up, it's going to come up over the top of this thing and start draining out over the top. So here's the water draining over the top. and. The consequence of that is going to be that it's going to take all this stuff floating on top and just clean it right out to the slot here. Also be a good way to measure exactly how much water you're getting out of the spring. So you can calculate your power if you wanted to do it that way. So there's a lot of pure water here. That's one spring. That's the source from the other spring because it's a little bit uh, higher than this one is. So combined, we got that much water. It's probably about 40 to 50 gallons a minute. I'm not really certain. I haven't measured it. it. Doesn't matter too much. We're going to get power from it once we get this pipe cut out and uh, reconnected. I'm running a Jenny and I got myself a little sawzall here. I'm gonna finish this job up and go turn the power on. Okay, I decided to use a rubber 
uh, connector clamp here, or a union, because the, the cut end wasn't too good, there's water, it'd be hard to actually uh, glue it in this watered environment here. And um, there's no pressure up at this end anyway, so any leakage I get, no big deal. Uh, got the new standpipe in place here, and that allows air in when I drain it. So all I gotta do is fit a piece of pipe in there. I'll do a dry fit on that one too, because I don't care whether it leaks just a little bit, which I doubt it will anyway. And uh, that'll do it. Okay, we just opened up this uh, thing. We got it all sealed, and the two springs are equalizing their pressure, and it's kind of spit the bit. That'll calm down. And we're capturing all the water except for that small amount getting by. That's all we're not using. Pretty cool. It's all power! Alright, here so we've uh, finished fixing the uh, spring box. And uh, we've buried the new pipe here under these rocks to protect it. And it's all dry fit, but it's still quite sturdy because the rocks are all supporting it. And uh, we're generating uh, 25 amps of continuous AC power right now. Still with a little bit of water left over. That's maybe oh, another five gallons a minute, something like that. Which would probably give us another four or five amps, but I don't need the power, so we're just leaving it as it is. Going to rebuild the uh, box today and be done. All done. Repaired box, buried pipe, power on the way. We walk out here. Kind of get a view of the some of the majesty that is out here in Colorado. We got a little bench down here to kick back and enjoy the view. There's a pond we put in a couple years ago. Not too shabby for a little place in Colorado with hydropower. We love it.